Welcome to Fun History. on F-Bomb History. When everybody thinks Highlanders, you always think of a kilt. You think of somebody running around in a little dress. That's why I wore my little dress today to uh, illustrate the kilt. However, the 71st Highlanders in the South didn't wear a kilt. They wore pants. All right, I'm about to talk about how Morgan set up Balfour. Before I do, I think I need more booze. Bartender. We're going to talk about the order of battle, how Morgan set up the battlefield. Now this was a, a tactic that worked so well that every single battlefield after this was set the same way. It was like how do you use your freaking, how do you use the assets you have at, 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 at hand to be able to freaking beat the Brits? Well the other thing is know who you got, but also think of a football field where you don't have one defensive line, you have three defensive lines. And imagine the the enemy team trying to bust through all three defensive lines before you ever get to a quarterback. With only one offensive line. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's basically what a defense in depth is. Pretty much. Now, Morgan decided, all right, I've got these militia guys. they got rifles. Now, rifles are like these things. Now, by the way, this is a sweet one right here. This is a uh, 58 caliber rifle. And what is the difference between a rifle and a musket is, it's got rifle lean, which makes it a rifle. Now, the problem with a rifle is you can't put a bayonet on it. A bayonet is one of these things over here. And so if anybody tries to charge you, like a cavalry or other infantry, yet they're on the way. But the good thing about a rifle is you can shoot up to like 400 yards with this bitch. Now, yeah, the problem with a rifle, though, is it takes you about 90 seconds-ish. Average, yeah, average. Guys could do faster, guys might be good slower. About but about 90 yeah. seconds to reload and fire that bitch, where it only takes... Yeah, well, this one... It only takes 15 seconds. Yeah, 15, 20 seconds, yeah. maybe. You could put four rounds to three rounds or four rounds out a minute. So you start having a firepower issue there. Now, the rifles, first off, Morgan realized the militia, normally the militia, whenever they come across a British infantry, they run away because they don't have the bayonets. Yep. And so you know. The militia is going to run away. You know they're going to run away. They're going to fucking hear mom calling and yeah. they're fucking leaving. Now Morgan, That's what militia does. Morgan was militia. He understands them. He was them. And so Morgan realizes they're going to run away. I know they're going to run away, so let me do something different. And what we're doing different is I'm going to tell the militia, you fire me three shots, just three, and you're allowed to leave. Just fucking leave, dude. So now... Three good shots and get the fuck out of my way. So now you're not running away like a coward and everybody looks at you badly. Now you're following orders. And the boss told us to oh, fucking leave. And now you motivated the fuck out of him to stay for three fucking shots. The boss said all we gotta do is three shots. Three shots. Three, three minutes. Shots. Give me three minutes on the battlefield and you can run the fuck away. Get out of the way. Now Morgan also realized within those ranks... <laughs> here's the killers. In any army... There are the killers. Yeah. And the killers yeah. are these guys that are legends. And me and Bert both know the legends. They're fucking sleepy eyed oh, yeah. looking motherfuckers that stand They're the usually very ranks. quiet. They don't do a lot of bragging, but they are the fucking killers. They're fucking. They're, yeah. They're, and so these, these guys, are, you know who the killers are. And so Morgan realized there's some serious killers. Today we would call them snipers. Now, these snipers were handpicked, 120 of them. You're going to go way out in front of the line, about 100 yards in front of the militia line, and you are going to snipe at everybody who look like they're in charge. It's called the first line, the yeah. first line of these guys. Yeah, the yeah. first line. And so they were told to shoot at the epaulets. And what it is is the British have rank up here that on, on the shoulders they're called epaulets. So anybody wearing something shiny up here, kill them. Sergeants, lieutenants, officers, captains. Yeah. Kill them all. 
Doesn't matter. So you snipe no. the fuck out of them, which is the same mission of snipers today. You yep. kill the people in charge. Because as soon as you fucking take the leadership out, all it's up is What the fuck? Nobody knows what the fucking nobody yeah. knows what the mission is gonna be. Take the leadership out. Now, the second line was the militia, the regular militia, but they're armed with rifles, too. Now, here's the difference. On the second yeah, line... it was like rifles and smoothbores and, I mean... Well, mainly rifles. It really was. Yeah, so yeah, a ton yeah, yeah. of rifles. Now, the second line was mainly rifles, but the other thing is, is they're set up about 150 yards in front of the snipers. Now, they are set up on the left side over here. They are kind of in open field, but on the right side, they're behind a hill. So the British doesn't see them at all. They only see the scattering of guys over the left side. Yep. Now, the third line is about 200 yards behind the second line. That's all your fucking badasses. That you're That's continental. all your fucking Continentals. That's your fucking professionals. Yeah. Those dudes have bought the fucking... They have bought into it. They have drank the fucking Kool-Aid. They are the fucking badass motherfuckers that are in it for the win. Period. Full stop. Yeah. Guess what? You can't see them. Yeah, the, the, the third line is in the tree line at the top of the hill, and they're kind of in the shade. You really can't see them. Now, the thing about the third line, there's six companies of Continentals. These are guys who basically didn't get captured Charleston. They yep. fought at Camden, but on top of that, you got to realize something about them. A lot of these guys had fought in the battles up north. They were in the Battle of Monmouth. They were yep. in the Battle of of Brandywine. So these guys have got a lot of freaking knowledge under their belt. Professionals. Yeah, so they're in the third line and they're underneath the shade of the trees. But wait, there's more. And behind the little crest of the hill. Yeah. Because there's a little crest of the hill that you can't see there. Well, there's there's a there's a reserve element. The reserve element are the dragoons. What? Now the dragoons are back behind and off to the left of the third line, but underneath some trees, so you can't see them either. Now, the cool thing about the Calpins Battlefield, if you visit the Calpins Battlefield today, you can stand where the third line was and see all, all the way it. where the British came in. It's like almost like a Super Bowl. You can see the whole thing, but because of the weather of the day, it was kind of a little bit hazy, kind of a little humid. The British, when they came on the field, could not see the third line, what was going on. Well, what was the weather like that day? Well, we're going to ask Haley right now. Haley, tell us what the weather's like. Thanks, Pat. Cowpen, South Carolina saw temperatures as high as 40 and as low as 15, with extreme humidity and a wind chill on the morning of the battle. It was below freezing on the morning of January 17, 1781. The high humidity made it difficult for flintlocks to fire. <laughs> the low clouds created a mist that blocked Tarleton's ability to see the Continental troops waiting on the ridge. The high humidity would have caused gun smoke to stay longer on the field, but the wind blew it away, which added to the already existing bitter, cold, and damp conditions in upstate South Carolina. This has been Weather with Haley. Back to you guys. Tarleton comes rolling up, and he has been slowed down in the woods for a while. He actually captures a guy named Everhart, who was a Sergeant Major. He captures freaking Everhart, and freaking Everhart is like, he's like, I'm Tarleton. Everhart's like, yeah, whatever. You know, who are you? I don't really care. He goes, well, I'm Charlton. I'm going to kick your ass. And bringing Everhart's like, hey, no, you're not. No. And this kind of stunned Charlton because he, he had never seen somebody that cocky. Yeah. He showed up. All of a sudden, Everhart's like, we're going to kick your ass for the day's over. And Charlton's like, what? Yeah, wait, what? What the fuck's out there that I don't know? Yeah. So, and Charlton freaking comes blasting out of the trees. And all he sees, he sees two lines. Two lines. Actually, mainly he just sees the one little the line because they're like in grass about yeah. this high. Yeah. yeah. The sniper. He, he, the sees, sniper. he sees lines out there and he's like, this is nothing but a bunch yeah. of militia. No, this is wax hauls all over. This is all wax hauls. I'm fixing to roll these bastards. Pull this right in. Chat. Hot. Yeah. I'm going to fucking roll these motherfuckers up. Watch this shit. McCalvary's trying to figure out where the flanks are. The problem is, is there's swamp on both sides of the fucking battlefield, right? You've got a big freaking. Uh, ridge line that's nothing but freaking cow pasture. Yeah. And on either side of this ridge line is swamp. Yeah. And it, Morgan, has cho right. Morgan has chosen his battlefield correctly because he can't be flanked. He can't be really flanked that much at all. So there's a little bit of time spent 
when a Tarleton is trying to figure out how do I get around this guy, I need to fucking get my line straight. Yeah, his, his cavalry comes onto the field, and initially they try to bust through the snipers, but snipers are good. In They're, fact, a couple of the cavalrymen get knocked out of their saddles. And so it's like, we can't go through the middle, let's try to go around and flank them. But even then, they still can't go around because of the swamps. Normally, whenever Tarleton does a fight, he just charges forward with the cavalry and the battle's over, like wax halls. Pretty much. The infantry never gets to be used, ever, ever, ever. So basically, the cavalry tries to go around left and right. They can't because of the swamp. So the cavalry goes back to Tarleton, and he tells them, we can't go forward. There's somebody in the way. And this is the point in time where he brings the infantry forward. When he brings the infantry forward? Yeah. It takes a minute for him to get freaking shook out. In it the takes right about line. 30 minutes. Yeah. Because these guys are trying to fight in the southern manner. If you actually read how Tarzan wrote it down, if you actually read how southern taxes were working, it was about three and a half to four feet between open men. Order. An open order fight. Hey, you want to see open order? Stand up. Stand up. Okay, open order is this. This is how far it was between each men. One shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. No saying was not shoulder to shoulder. It's about he and I. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so they fought in open order whenever they were going against somebody they did not have a bayonet. And the militia in front of them were just these guys who were snipers. They had no bayonet. What happens is Tarleton deploys his line. Now his line, a typical battlefield, whenever you deploy your line, you always put your weak guys to the right and your really strong guys to the left. And the reason that is, is because everybody always dresses to all right, let me tell you, the weak guys to the left, strong guys to the right. Yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. dresses to the right, so they tend to push this way. And what happens is they keep pushing this way, this side is able to get flanked, but this side is heavy. And so your good guys are over here and your bad guys are over here. Now, in the uh, Tarleton's army, the good guys over here is the British Legion Infantry. Mm -hmm. But in the middle, you have this brand new unit, the Seven Fusiliers. Now, like I said, they're brand new, oh. they, they, they're just reconstituted. Now, all the way to the right, though, is the 71st Highlanders. Well, they're actually behind. They're not all the way to the right. They're behind in reserve because they can't all get on the battlefield. It's a tight battlefield. But to, to kind of, at first off, Carlton didn't care about that. He looked in front of them, and he saw all these guys that were snipers. I don't need to bring up my best guys. I can just take them out with these new guys. Give them a little freaking, you know, confidence. But to make sure that the new guys didn't get freaked out too much, he put a cannon with them. Actually, two cans. One on the right on the right side, and one on the uh, right in the middle of them. And they begin moving forward. Now, that right there. As they move forward, the snipers the entire time are shooting at them. Bing, 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 bing. Taking out the guys with the uplets. In fact, one of them, a guy from Seven Fusilier was an officer. As he rides forward, he's yelling at Seven Fusiliers, oh, don't worry about them, they can't hit nobody. Hit him right in the forehead, kills him dead. Now, as they're moving forward, the seven fusiliers get freaked the fuck out. Mainly because the officer and the horse just got fucking killed. They just got whacked. Yeah. And they stop. They totally stop. Now, everybody else keeps moving forward. You got the British Legion over here, and you got uh, everybody else moving forward. But the seven fusiliers are back here because they're freaked out and they fucking stopped. And it takes a while for Charlton to stop the entire line. To dress the line. Yeah, to dress, dress, dress the line. Just the line. And as they're doing this, the snipers are still shooting. Bing, 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 bing. The snipers are working in groups of three, so nobody's unloaded at any time. They're smart about this. Bing, 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 bing. And they're killing officers left and right. Sergeants. Left Sergeants, right. officers, corporals, right. didn't matter. If you had some shit on your shoulder, you're getting fucking shot at. So, the second line has been sitting there listening to all this going on. For like and an hour. Yeah, it's like pops and bangs and pops and bangs. Behind the hill. Everything's, and they can't really see what's going on. And they're fucking cold. And it's cold. Oh shit, yeah. it's freaking cold, dude. It's been it's cold. Slap your hands, stomp your feet. Been there. Can like we that. remember? Can we remember? It's freaking January in South Carolina. I'm sorry if you hadn't been there. Yeah. Whatever. Mountain phase. Got it. It's fucking cold. I think the coldest I've ever been in my life was in North Carolina in February. The fucking and cold. And I've been everywhere. I'm, I'm Commander McGrath. I mean, well, these, dudes, cold. these dudes, these dudes are sitting there watching this fight, and as the fucking Brits are pushing forward, 
of course, the first line is like, okay, yep, got it. Um, yeah. the, the snipers are moving back. They're starting to move back. As they're bounding back, they're bounding back. The Brits are coming. Yeah. The fucking right. second line don't even really see the Brits yet. No, they're behind the hill. Because they're fucking by, down the hill, right? Reverse slope defense. The reverse slope defense. Explain to them what that means. Okay. Reverse slope defense. Look, so reverse slope defense is if you're on the back side of a hill and this is a hill. If you're on the back side of the hill and the people come up over the hill, you can freaking shoot the shit out of them as they come over the hill. It's fucking pretty badass. It is. So here come the freaking second line. And the Brits are coming up over the second line. And here come the Brits. And they're silhouetted coming over the fucking top of the fucking hill. Early morning light, 50 yards away. And the militia is armed with rifles. Let me go and explain to you how fucking rifles work. Yeah. When you're freaking shooting uphill, you have a tendency to shoot low. Really, really fucking low. Yeah. You can shoot at a dude center mass, right, right here, yeah. center mass, on the fucking top of a hill, and you're going to shoot fucking six so to seven inches. So your bullets will hit right about here. These dudes are getting shot in the fucking crotch. You're getting shot in the nuts, coming up over the fucking hill. Ow. All right. Holy Ow. shit. Ow. The second line are the guys that freaking Morgan told. Yeah. Oh, give me two. Give me three rounds. Three shots. Three shots. Give me three shots. Give me three shots, Mister. And fucking three shots. Get the fuck out of the way. And you can right. run away. And they got out of the way. So these three shots come, and bam, they're fucking rolling. Out of the goddamn way. The yeah. Brits are like, oh shit, hang on, stand by. We have to dress our line again. Now there is one more thing Morgan told them is the British, whenever they came on, they would go, Rah! Yeah, so the Brits were like, Hoo! and they'd give them a, oh, oh, it'd be like, uh, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, a, like a Russian uh, uh, Yeah, it'd go, like, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, and it was like supposed to fucking strike fear and fucking consternation in the American troops. The Southerners had something else that scared the shit out of you. The, Amer the Southern Americans? Yeah. Freaking Morgan said, oh, they give us the British halloo? Give them the Indian halloo. Now, the Indian halloo will the be Indian. on, and many years later was known as the Rebel Yell. And the Rebel Yell was next level shit. So, at <laughs> this point, freaking after the Indian halloo, the friggin' militiamen said, all right, well, I gave you the three rounds. I'm fucking rolling out. Well, Morgan was friggin', Morgan was a militiaman himself. He knew the game. <clears throat> Morgan was like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. And the militiamen are friggin' rolling back to their horses. To their horses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they got their horses tied up in the tree line. The militia are like, I'm fucking out, bitch. Fucking, I gave you the three rounds you wanted, right? Yep. And freaking Morgan's I can go like, now. Morgan's, Morgan's like, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's all yet. good. Watch this shit. We're not done yet. Now, picture this. All right, Tarleton has just beat the militia. He's done. This is literally like uh, the wax all over again. The militia are running away. He does not see the Continentals. They have no fucking clue. The yeah. Continentals yeah, are there. The Continentals are, are 200 yards away, underneath the shade of the trees, and it is kind of humid. Even though it's cold, Back it's humid. Of the fucking hill. He can't see it. Can't so see everybody it. else is running away. Now Tarleton does what he always does. He tells his dragoons, "Ride those fucking guys down and chop them into mad goddamn pieces, bitches." And damn. they take off. And they ride after him. He thinks it's all over now because it's all over. The battle's over. Morgan is waiting with the militia at their horses and tells them, don't go nowhere yet. Stand by. Which brings you do. So what happens is, is freaking Talton sends out his freaking, what I would consider the badass of his freaking mounted element, the 17th. The 17th, these guys are hardcore no shit, British regular dragoons. And they were on the right side. They are on the right. <laughs> That's where So Talton, he's got 50 of them. He's got about 50 freaking, he's got about a platoon size element of 17 dragoons. The Death of Glory Boys. And he freaking rolls them. He says, go. Ride those fuckers down. Ride them down. Kill them because all, like what's happening? Like you always do. That freaking line is, they're like, I'm out. 
Gave my three rounds. I'm fucking out. I'm running to my freaking horse. Peace out, bitches. I'm gone. And Morgan's there. Morgan's like, hold up. Yeah. But at the same time, Charlton was like, yep, go run them down. Yeah. These motherfuckers put steel to fucking flanks. Let me tell you. There's nothing cooler. There's nothing cooler than putting a fucking spur to the side of a fucking horse. It's not quite like that. It's really not like that. Not at all like that. And they fucking start rolling. Boom. William Washington, who's sitting in reserve, has got 80 horsemen. Right? The third light dragoons. The most badass fucking dragoon unit. This on the by the first dragoons. The badass Dragoon unit of the fucking American Revolution. Somebody show me who did more freaking actual charges into infantry or into cavalry than fucking the third Dragoons. The third Dragoons freaking looked up. William Washington said, that's not going to stand. Fuck you. Go get them. He told the boys, he gave them fucking, he gave them the commands. Shoot that modifier. Put hands to sabers, draw sabers, forward at the trot, charge. And they fucking rolled. Not like that. They rolled. And they hit the 17th Light Dragoons in the flank. Yeah! I mean, the 17th Light Dragoons is running this way, the 3rd Light Dragoons hit them here. Boom. In the flank. Brutal cavalry battle, slash and hack. Ah! So, they freaking hit these dudes, the third dragoons <coughs> hit these dudes in the flank and emptied 15 to 18 saddles. And in the middle of this, the freaking militia sees this happening and goes, oh shit, somebody's supporting us? Reload! That ain't never happened before. Wow! And they turn around and freaking pound some freaking rounds back into them. So at the end, the 17th light dragoons empties freaking... They freaking run off the field with 18 empty saddles. Yeah. So I don't know. It's like 40%, 30%. 30, 30. It's more than 25, less than 50. I don't know. I don't do fucking math. 30, fucking 5, 36%. Now, what I do know is 12 12 ounces. So I would like the bartender to give me more. Hey, bartender. I don't even know. Hey, bartender. Hey, man. Look here. Give me one, two, three. Give me four cold glasses of beer. I'm giving you one. Hey! There we go. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Addy. Addy, ladies and gentlemen, Addy. All right, now back on the battlefield. Dalton's back on the battlefield. And remember, he thinks he's won. He thinks he's won. They think he's kicking everybody's ass. He's sending his dragoons off, and they're like slash and hack, and he's he's won. It's black stocks all over again. Not black stock. Wax hauls. Wax hauls. All hauls. over again. He's like fucking. I'm kicking right, everybody's now. ass. It's now, fucking epic. All of a sudden. And you got to imagine the psychological effect of this. The entire British line has lost a shitload of people. I but mean, they're, wait, they're dead they bodies ain't even, everywhere. They ain't even seen the freaking Continental Line yet. No, not yet. They ain't even, the Continental Line hadn't even fucking opened. So they, they're, they're sitting there and they've lost a lot. They think the battle's over. Imagine, imagine think of you that you just won the football game. And then you're reorganizing your line, and all of a sudden the dragoons that you sent out there to chop and slash and hack, they come by and they're fucking panicked. They're panicked, man. In and fact, some of the horses don't even have riders. They're like, dumb. All the horses are freaking rolling back, and you're like, what the They're covered in blood and shit. Like, what the fuck just happened? And they're panicked. They don't just stop at you. They keep riding all the fucking way back in the battlefield. Fuck you. We're going to go back. We're fucking peace out, bitch. So you're, out. you're at this line, and you're trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. But wait, there's more. Now, mm-hmm. the sun is slowly coming up because this is really fucking it's early. It's early in the morning. morning. Sun's slowly, and all of a sudden, as it's they're fucking sitting cold there, as and, shit. They're, and they're reorganizing their line, they look 200 yards in front of them and they see in the shade, what the fuck is that? And in the shade, all of a sudden, they see the line of Continentals. And they know they're fucking Continentals. Just on the back side of that hill. They're wearing blue coats. Just on the back yeah, side of that they're hill. They're sitting underneath the shade of the trees and they can oh, see them. Oh, fuck. Now that's 200 yards away, and all of a sudden they realize, holy fuck, 
the battle isn't over. The battle hasn't even begun yet. We need to go and dress the line. Yeah. So now, line. what Dalton has to do is he has to shrink his line. Because if you're fighting people without bayonets, you will do open order. But now you got to go normal order, which means you're tight. So there's no way he might get between you. So he has to go his big long line and shrink them. He also brings up his artillery up. And what happens now is what I call a conventional regular fight. Now, convince a regular fight. Imagine an entire army armed with this right here. This right here is no. a 75 caliber musket. Now, well, the, Americans, it. the Americans were using a 69 caliber musket. It doesn't fucking matter. A big goddamn ball zipping down range. Now, imagine an entire army armed with shotguns. 12 gauge shotguns. Now, some of you in your life, you may have hunted with a 12 gauge shotgun. Maybe. You know how far you can shoot. A 12 gauge shotgun doesn't shoot that far. It shoots, I mean, you're lucky if you hit a deer 100 yards. Extremely lucky. Normally, 50 yards is about what you shoot with a 12 gauge shotgun with a fucking solid slug. Imagine an entire army armed with 12 gauge shotguns. Now, it's not just a 12 gauge slug shotgun, it's also, imagine a big solid lead ball, and behind it are three little balls. Because the American army, you love to shoot what was called bucket, bucket ball. ball. So, yeah. one big ball, a bunch of little balls behind it. Now, that is what you're facing. So, the American Army begins opening up and firing about 100 yards away. One football field away with a shotgun. Now, one thing the British used to fucking say all the time was, the last thing you want to do ever in America is get in a firefight with Americans. No, they tend to shoot pretty well. Because Americans... Don't fucking back down from the firefight. Well, they're also pretty good at what they... They're, they're good at aiming and killing. Now, I'm not going to say the British aren't good either. British also trained to aim, and so they were also good. But the Americans just tended to be better shots. A lot. Now, the better. British also brought up their artillery. Now, normally an artillery fire is this thing, a three-pound iron ball. Now, the iron ball is great if you're going to hit some object, like maybe a ship or a house or another artillery piece. But when you're shooting an infantry, you don't want to shoot a big giant iron ball. You fire what's called grape shot. It looks like this right here. Inside here is a whole mess of little balls. It makes your balls. It makes your shotgun turn into a giant. I mean, your 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 cannon turn into a giant shotgun. A huge shotgun. So the most casualties on the American side during this fight was the Delaware line. There was two companies of Delaware Continentals. And they were right in front of that artillery. So they were being hit more than anybody else because of the artillery. It's kind of like another war. World War I was an artillery war. Most casualties were from the artillery. Well, the same thing was kind of true with every war. Most casualties are by the artillery. There's a reason they call him the king of battle. There's yeah. a reason that the infantry is called the queen of battle. Now. Just saying. As the Americans start firing and the British start firing, Bannister Tarleton realizes... I've lost a shitload of guys. I got to replace this. Most of the Amer uh, British casualties were produced on the militia line, the second line. So Cornwallis decides, I am actually going to deploy my best troops. Those guys wearing the little dresses. The, the, I take it back. No, they weren't because they didn't wear kilts. Remember I told you that? Anyway, the Highlanders move up. And as the Highlanders move up, they begin this back and forth and back and forth, just trying to reduce each other's numbers with basic volley fire. And they overstretch the flank of the American freaking right side. Right. The American right, all of a sudden the Highlanders are over the stretched of them and are like, the Americans are like, oh shit, we're getting outflanked. This is bullshit. What do we do? So there was a dude in the first Maryland, who was all the way... No, actually, all the way on the right was the Virginians. On the, on the right yeah, side. Yeah, Virginians. Virginians. But the, the commander, the guy that was the officer... Oh, oh, Howard. Yeah, he was a Marylander. Yeah, he was a Marylander. John Eager Howard saw what was going on. And John Eager Howard gave the command... and see if I can do this correctly. Yeah. It was called, to the right, by the left wheel... March. Okay, and what he was it's trying, called refusing the flank. What he was trying to do was instead of having a line well, no, that's overstretched over here, he was trying to fold here. that line Hold back. Hold your pistol. We're going to illustrate here. Stand up. All right. Both of us face straight ahead. Straight ahead. I'm the 71st Highlanders. I'm going to attack you this way. Fix me. 
That's called refusing the flight. But imagine this with a 50-man company. So when they try to refuse the flank, here's the problem. There's this thing called the fog of war. The command goes out to refuse the flank, and that far right company says to the right about face. And there's a start marching backwards so, so they can move backwards. in place. And when they start marching backwards, oh wait, that next company was like, what, what? Yeah, they don't know what's going on. What, what the fuck's going on? Why are they retreating? So they did it right. Maybe about we things. should retreat. And they're starting to move back. Now, and wait, the next company goes, hey, what the fuck? And they start moving back. And when they start moving back, Morgan's going, what the fuck? What the fuck? Now, wait, there is one more factor in this. The guy that was supposed to turn around and move back and then turn back around and shoot again, he was shot in the fucking head. Yeah. Now, I take it back. His second in charge was shot in the head. The actual guy... His name was, I'm looking at the notes here, yeah, Andrew Wallace. He was so freaked out by his XO being shot in the head that he forgets the command. Now, <laughs> Wallace, uh, basically, oh, I don't mean how you Howard basically says the reason he was so confused was he said he blamed it on a vile woman from the camp taking his mind off his duties. So basically, Wallace had his mind on some poontang downrange, and he was so enamorated by that p-word that he decided I can't do a battle anymore. I'm so worried about getting lucky that night. Yeah, I'm kind of like that's fucking bullshit. Now that may or may not be true, but that's what Howard said so, was the problem. But in the middle of all this, as they're marching backwards, according to the freaking written uh, record, yeah. Freaking William Washington, who's way back in the rear watching all this bullshit happen, sends a messenger to Howard, a messenger, and says, turn around and give well, him a fire. Well, there's also, right before that, Morgan writes up. Morgan asks Howard, what oh, the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Dude? Now, Morgan, Morgan, I'm telling you right now, Morgan was not a guy who talked in such a way that would be... He talks no, like us. He talks like we are right he now. Talks like, he talks he like literally it. said, What the fuck, what the fuck are what you the doing? What are you doing? You're a fucking chicken shit, piece of shit. Douchebag. Retreating off the balcony like a coward motherfucker. But Howard was also pissed off, and he went, Fuck you. Look at these guys backing off. They're like on a parade ground. Guys on a parade ground don't retreat like cowards. They are retreating because you fucking ordered it, even though nobody fucking knew what was no, going no, on. No. So uh, that's what Morgan said. No, Mo fuck according, it. according yeah. to the, according to the fucking the the fucking written record, Morgan sent a fucking uh, sent a goddamn messenger to him and said, oh, "Hey, Washington, Washington hey, did. Washington, well, Washington did. Yeah. I'm sorry. William Washington sent a message to Howard and said, "Hey, turn around and give them a fire, and I will charge them." And Morgan at the same time said the same thing. You turn around, do an about face, shoot the fuck out of them, and I will hit them. And what? William Washington will hit them in the ass. And that's what happened. Next time on F Bomb History. What? Is it going to fit? Is it going to fit? I'm just going to ask. That's what she said. That's what she said. Wow. Did you say that voice? Opened it all oh my God. God. at the same time. I got shit all over my face. That's what she said. Came home last night, all full of lush. My babe began to fuss, and I said, honey, honey, I don't care what the people are thinking. I'm not drunk, I'm just drinking. I said, I'm up, another round. I said, I'm up, another round. I said, I'm up, another round. One more.